Actually, this challenge is very simple. What you have to do is go and read about save point. Welcome back guys, Arun this side with a new background if you see. I think this is one of our new meeting rooms which I'm using for the first time and of course I'll ask my team, I don't know if they will help me to put those buffaloes behind me. I think that's what we call the buffalo uh, pictures but I think they are very beautiful and by the way there was one guy or one candidate who asked me uh, where can they get those paintings. I mean I don't know from where our team got those paintings but any which way if I get any information I'll respond to you. Meanwhile as I always say please send your queries to support at dbagenesis.com and let us start our today's episode with the new background and this is our first question of this episode. Can we perform any transactions in physical standby mode? My question to you is do you actually know what mode your physical standby runs in? If you don't know first find that out okay I mean the I mean you will be wasting time in finding out or I'm not sure if you really know how physical standby works let me tell you physical standby will always be in mount mode and do you think you can query a database in mount mode I think no right so I mean you know the answer but first of all you need to understand the physical standby runs in mount mode and it is hard for any user to connect to a database when the database is running in mount mode. But if you convert physical standby into active data guard, that's a different case. Active data guard is an open database, but it will be applying the logs in the background. So it will have the read logs coming from the primary database and it will still be applying those logs in the background, okay? and that's when you as the users or also the other users can connect to the database and they can only run the select queries. So Active Data Guard is a separate case and Active Data Guard needs to have a separate license. But as your question goes, physical standby mode, no, it's not possible except for some sys user queries because you want to query the database and check the status of the database, V$ dollar views and all. You cannot allow users to connect to the physical standby database and they can't actually query the physical standby. They have to connect to the primary database. So if the database is probably, I'm talking about the standby. So if the standby is logical standby, snapshot standby or active data guard, except these three standbys, you cannot query in the physical standby mode. So all these three standbys definitely they allow you to query the database, connect to the database, but the physical standby does not allow you because physical standby actually runs in mount mode, right? That being said, let's move on to the next question of the day. What is the difference between obsolete and expired backup? Very simple and straightforward and I don't know why so many DBS get confused with the same question because I'm getting this question from day one of my career from all the students across the globe. Obsolete means let's get to the general meaning of like uh, the each word obsolete. So obsolete means not required. Okay, so I think uh, let's say uh, in your wardrobe you have some clothes which have become obsolete like they are not required anymore. You just want to throw those uh, clothes, right? So obsolete means not required for database recovery. I'll give you an example. If your recovery window is of seven days and you have a backup which was taken 60 days before. Now do you think you uh, like those 60 days before backup is required for recovery of the database like I mean It's obsolete. That's what it means obsolete means not required for the database recovery now expired backup means The backup was taken, but the backup was not found or the backup file was not found on the disk so it becomes expired, right? so the I mean the question of the expired backup required for recovery or not is a separate case. Okay, that's a different case. I'm not talking about that. So you have taken a backup and the backup no longer exists on the disk. So it becomes expired because Armin knows that there is a backup, but that backup file does not exist on the disk. Probably someone deleted the backup file 
using the rm-rf command at OS level or probably someone else move those files to some other location. So rmen says that backup resides under certain location and when you go to that location the file doesn't exist. So that's when you call it as expired backup, right? So obsolete means no longer required for recovery. Expired means it might or might not be required for recovery but rmen says that the backup resides into certain location but when you go to that location the backup file is deleted who deleted how it was deleted if someone moved that file all those cases are separate all right so very simple straightforward keep it simple obsolete means no longer required expired means not found right let's move on to the next question of the day what is save point in oracle sql See guys, like you have rollback, you have commit, and you also have save point. These three are actually, uh, I think we call it as TCL, transaction control languages inside SQL. Like you have multiple types of SQL commands. So these are one type of commands, transaction control language. Now commit rollback, you all know, but the save point actually helps you to roll back so what you can do is let's say you run a couple of transactions and you issue save point one and then you run a couple of transactions you say save point two and then you run a couple of transactions save point three and then let's take you want to roll back okay so you can say roll back to save point two so all the transactions that happen after save point two will be rolled back right so you don't have to kind of like i mean it actually helps you as a bookmark or a pointer in the transactions so you have multiple transactions and you can like issue save points and it will save that point so like you want to roll back transactions between that save point and current point so like you can use roll back to save point one two or three very simple so let me give you a quick debate challenge actually this challenge is very simple what you have to do is go and read about save point right that being said let's move on to the next question of the day how can i kill all these sessions inside oracle at once my question to you is why do you want to kill all these sessions i think the simple way is to shut down the database <laughs> I mean, I mean, don't do that. Okay. I can understand this question is coming from a different angle. You, I mean, you might have a situation where you can't shut down the database, but you want to kill multiple sessions. There is no way to do it in a normal database. You can only kill like one session at a time. All right. So what you can do is in case, if you have this kind of situation, write a PLSQL code that will kind of like get all these session IDs from V dollar session and start killing them one by one. That's the only way or else the smartest way is shut down the database, right? I'm not sure if you are doing that, you're responsible. All right, let's move on to the last question of the day. Which is the best way to upload Excel sheet into Oracle database? I mean, do I need to tell the answer? Most of you already know the answer. You have SQL star loader utility inside the Oracle database, which will help you to upload Excel sheets, CSV, flat files, comma delimited, pipe delimited or any other character delimited files and you can use SQL star loader to load those files into the Oracle database. So simple, what you can do is in the Excel, you have that option save as and save it as CSV file, comma separated file. And I mean, you have to get this that CSV file into the Linux server where you want to upload it. And once you have that CSV file, what you can do is you can start the SQL star loader utility inside the Oracle database and give the reference to the CSV file. It will start loading the file, but you need to create a control file. And this is a control file related to SQL star loader. This control file is different when compared to the Oracle database control file. Okay. So SQL star loader also needs a control file to control what kind of data is being inserted inside Oracle. What I'll do is guys for you all, I mean, if you go to support.dvgenesis.com and search SQL loader, you will get an amazing article which will help you as to how to import or uh, use SQL star loader utility inside the Oracle database. All right, very simple, straightforward. And I guess that's all I had guys for this session. Keep commenting below these videos. And I believe like you all 
should participate in the daily DBA challenge. I am excited that all of you are commenting below these videos and putting your comments in the daily DBA challenge response. So meanwhile, it's time to jump to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question. Guys, this one is for everyone actually the entire DBA community I mean guys I get so many calls every single day and what I believe is everybody whom I talk to they say only one thing you know what Arun uh, you, there is so much I need to learn I want to learn I want to become an exceptional DBA I want to become an expert DBA I want to go to next level I don't know this I don't know this I don't know this I don't know rack I don't know Oracle Golden it I don't know cloud migrations I don't know this I don't know that hold on I mean, this thinking of yours is destroying your confidence and I'm very honest and open about it, okay? You know, guys, see, I mean, it's a generic way of living. You are always thinking about what you don't know. Have you ever stopped and like, have you said or have you uh, like spoke to yourself or do you tell these things to yourself that, okay, wow, I know how to install Linux. Wow, I know Oracle SQL. Wow, I know how to set up Oracle Data Guard. I mean, understand how much confidence this will give rather than always thinking about what you don't know. See, I don't discourage you all to not to talk about what you don't know, but also you should be aware about what all things you know, because when you talk more about what you know, that's when your confidence will increase. And when you sit in front of people or interviewers, that confidence will take you forward understand guys like there are thousand things even i don't know when it comes to oracle database there are maybe ten thousand things i don't know when it comes to cloud but i i'm not always complaining about what i don't know what i do is i always embrace what i know and that's what i want all of you to do going forward stop like even if you think or watch any YouTube video, some guy doing something, some guy setting up a cloud server, very big cloud server, some guy setting up NAS storage, some guy setting up SAN storage. Hold on. Don't blame yourself that you don't know. Understand what you know, that guy might not know, right? So don't start a comparison when you watch some videos or when you watch someone great at something. Always acknowledge, but when you are talking to yourself in your free time or when you are alone, you should always embrace your wins. So wherever you win in life and whatever things you know, talk about that. And that's when your confidence will build in. Always, I mean, don't be negative towards yourself. Don't be harsh like you don't know something. Always celebrate what you know. And trust me guys, that confidence will take you to another level all the DBAs, you all who are watching this episode. What I want you to do is right now pause this video and say it to yourself like, yes, I know, fill in the blanks. Whatever you know about Oracle technology, fill in the blanks and trust me, that will relieve you and you will feel more comfortable, more confident and that's the way to live. Don't like, don't be harsh to yourself saying like, I don't know this, I don't know this, I don't know this, stop all that. Say to yourself, wow, I know all this. Fill those blanks, you will feel real comfortable. That being said guys, please keep on sending your queries to support at dbagenesis.com. Meanwhile, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.